Something was pouring from his mouth. He examined his sleeve. Blood? Blood. Crimson, copper-smelling blood. His blood. 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 And bits of sick. Greetings, traveller. I'm Garth Marenghi, horror writer and star of the 1980s television programme Garth Marenghi's Dark Place. Tonight, I present to you Alex's Half a Weenathon wrap up. So, sit back, dim the lights, or switch them off if you don't have dimmers, and enjoy. Well, I say enjoy. Thank you, Garth. I am such a huge fan. Hello, it's Alex, and welcome to Hey Little Thrifter. If you are not already familiar with Garth Marenghi's Dark Place, then I highly suggest you rectify that immediately. Not only is it one of the best British comedy series, it's also just one of the best things of all time ever. Today, I'm going to be doing my wrap up for Half a Weenathon. This was a readathon that took place this past week to celebrate being halfway to Halloween. It was created by the wonderful Megan and Sue at Spinebreakers, and they asked myself, along with Stephanie at That's What She Read, and Carol at Carol Marie Reads, to co-host, which I, yeah, jumped at the chance to do so. There were seven challenges, and I completed most of them, but not quite all. But first up, challenge one was to read a book that has been adapted into a movie and also watch the movie. My choice for this was Burnt Offerings by Robert Morasco. And this is a book that I have already seen the film adaptation of some years ago, but hadn't read the book. It was originally published in 1973 and it's about a family who live in a noisy apartment in Queens, New York and they really want to get away for the summer. They find a perfect opportunity to rent this really grand mansion out in the country for a really cheap price. And the catch is that there's an elderly lady who lives in the house. She is a recluse and she just stays in two rooms at one end of the house. And the family just have to provide her with three meals a day and they're good to go. So they go ahead and rent the place and they start getting settled in and exploring this giant house and its grounds. But soon strange things start to happen and each of the characters starts to experience different things in the house and it changes them slightly and it affects their relationships with each other. This is definitely a slow burn, which I absolutely loved, but I know it's not everyone's cup of tea. But this definitely had really great character development. I loved the story, I loved his writing. The strange and creepy things that happen, I found, were excellently done, and the ending was, yeah, just wonderful. So, I highly recommend this one. This was actually my favourite book that I read during the readathon. I gave it five stars. And I didn't, unfortunately, get a chance to rewatch the film at the end, but I will do so soon because I would really like to rewatch it now I've read the book. And I will also do a separate review video for this so I can talk a little bit more about it. But yeah, Burnt Offerings by Robert Morasco, five stars from me. Challenge number two was to read a book by an indie author, and I read Halloween Fiend by C.B. Hunt. And this book also fulfilled the challenges to read a book set in autumn and to read a book released within the last five years. So this is set in a small town and there's something that lives in this town that requires a sacrifice from each resident every evening. And this all culminates in All Hallows Eve where a human sacrifice must be made. And I enjoyed this one. I did this as a buddy read with Jason's Weird Reads, Carol Marie Reads, and Jamie Reads. So that was a lot of fun. I thought the book was good. It was quite an enjoyable read. It was humorous in places and creepy in places. 
I think overall I liked it but I didn't love it. It, it never really kind of wowed me at any point. I gave this one three stars. I had read another of C.V. Hunt's books, Cock Block, which I did like a lot more. That one I gave four stars to. Um, that definitely had the something extra that I think I was missing in Halloween Fiend. But it was still a good read, I'd still recommend it, and yeah, it would be perfect to read around Halloween itself. Challenge number three was to read a book by a master of horror, and I went with I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. This is a classic of the genre, um, I guess it crosses the boundaries between horror and sci-fi, and it originally came out in the 1950s, and I think for its time it was amazing, um, and it still really holds up today. There are so many great ideas in here, I really liked his writing. It's a vampire story, and it's about a character called Robert, who believes he's the last human on Earth, and he tries to keep his house a fortress to keep the vampires out and then by day he'll go out and try and kill them and just try and survive basically while always holding out some hope that there are other humans left. I thought this one was excellent and I gave it four stars. Um, if it's been on your list for a while as well and you just haven't picked it up yet then go for it, I definitely recommend it. And I read this as a buddy read with Vicky at chapter 32. Challenge number five was to read something that is not a typical novel. So a graphic novel or a short story, something like that. And I went with a short story, The Lottery by Shirley Jackson. Another one that's been on my to read list for the longest time. So yeah, I'm so glad I finally picked this one up. It's about an annual ritual and with it being a short story, it's hard to say much more about it. I did actually know the general gist of the story before I read it, so I guess I didn't have that surprise element um, of where the story goes, but it was still such a fantastic story nonetheless. She's such a fantastic writer and everything that was fitted into just these 12 pages uh, was excellently done. The feeling of just something not being quite right but you don't know what it is and there's like a building sense of dread. Yeah, I loved this one, I gave it five stars and I definitely want to read some more of her short stories from this collection when I get chance. So far I have only read We Have Always Lived in the Castle and The Haunting of Hill House, two of her novels but I loved both of those so yeah, I really need to read more by her. And the last challenge, number seven, was to dress up in a costume and post it on social media. So here is my effort. Yeah, like I said, Garth Marenghi's Dark Place is just one of the best things ever, so I had the bright idea to <laughs> choose him as my costume for this, and it was a lot of fun putting it together. So that was my half a weenathon wrap up. It's been a lot of fun, and I've really enjoyed seeing your posts and videos about it as well. It's been really awesome to see so many people join in. Thank you ever so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully I will see you again in my next video.